let's face it, nobody likes making electrodes, but if you have to make them, you might as well do it quickly and efficiently. Let's see how the latest Simitron release can help us. We're going to design 16 electrodes. Let's see how quickly we can do it. We are going to begin by extracting an electrode. We size the area to be burned, accept that geometry, and we can do a fit and center. To save time, we'll use a template to add the extensions. Put on the blank, the holder, the coordinate system, and voila! Here's one electrode ready to go. Now let's go around this block and extract a few more electrodes using the same template. Simitron has many different extension types. The one we are using is called Tangent to Blank. It is based on the tangency of the burn faces and extends new faces to the size of the blank. While we are doing this, it would be a good time to point out that we are not bound to working in either solids or surfaces. Because Simitron is a hybrid system, we can use solids or surfaces in one single environment. As a matter of fact, we can even perform solid operations on surfaces, which can be quite helpful. So let's move on. In this area, you'll see that we're going to gang a few ribs together, and I'll show you later that we only get one extension, but it's easy to add more extensions if needed. In this area, I'm going to deselect a few of these surfaces that we don't want to include, and then do a fit and center to the ones we do want. As you can see, the size of the blank is automatically updated accordingly so I don't have to worry about making these adjustments. For this electrode, you may notice that we won't normally take the boss and the ribs together. However, I am going to do it this way in order to show how easy it is to modify the geometry later. For the next electrode, we are going to do a rotated burn. We can simply pick on a reference line and position the electrode along that line. Again, I can easily resize it and fit it to that shape. The one next to it is small enough that we really don't need an angle, so we can quickly remove that. That's 12 electrodes done already. You may have also noticed that the feature guide comes up underneath my mouse every time I right click, so I don't have to keep moving my mouse all the way to the feature guide over in the upper left corner. This saves me from wearing out my mouse pad, but more importantly saves me valuable time in the process. Here again, I hold down the shift key and I box pick to deselect surfaces that I don't want. Then a fit and center puts it on location. By this time, you may be wondering about mirrored electrodes or double-sided electrodes. We'd be happy to show you how easy it is to make these in Symmetron. Just contact us using the form below and we'll schedule a time to demonstrate these to you, as well as additional extension types that you don't see here. So we are now less than five minutes into the process and we have extracted 16 electrodes, most of which are 100% done. Not bad. We can simulate the electrode's movement. Now they are all moving in Z, but it doesn't have to be that way. You'll notice that the two long electrodes on the right side of the part would be better served to be burned in the X direction, and we can assign that trajectory. 
Here we say this electrode is going to be burning an X. This makes for some pretty cool pictures and movements on our screen and out on the shop floor viewer. But more important, this information is passed directly to the electrode drawings or to the EDM setup program, which is capable of posting out the electrode locations and burn settings directly into our CNC EDM. Next, we are going to look at this electrode. I mentioned earlier that we only have one extension on it, but that's easy to fix. We can easily copy the steps from another geometry and apply them to this one. So here, we choose Apply Template for my reference electrode. Pick the electrode, and these steps are now included in our electrode. Now that was easy. Earlier, I mentioned that this electrode wouldn't normally be made this way, but I wanted to show a few things. So right now, we are going to stitch this all together, and we are going to use something called Remove and Extend. We pick these faces for removal and allow those faces to go away, and the solid is healed perfectly. However, it is not necessarily how I would do it. Here we can also use a method called Extend Object. I'm going to pick these faces and reduce them in size by 100 thousandths, and that will allow for a bit more rigidity in the electrode. If you are not the guy doing the programming, you would need to convey information about what size tool to send into those corners. So we can put a round one here for let's say 1 16th so that the programmer knows he has to go down to a 1 8th cutter in order to finish this electrode. This is a good example for effective combination of working in surfaces and solids. On this electrode, let's take a look at how we manually create the extensions. First, we need to chain along the open edge. We have many nice tools to help with chaining. Here, we are just box picking to chain along the open edge. Next, we choose the extension tool, which has many options. The option we use here is tangent to blank. This will get the draft angle on the burn surface to be continued until it reaches the blank size in any direction. Note that the colors we use here will play a significant role during the application of the NC templates, which we will show in the next video. Okay, we have all 16 electrodes done and are ready to make some drawings. Simatron allows me to generate beautiful drawings. It is all done automatically, so I can pretend I worked hard, but there is really no effort on my part. The first one that I'm going to show is the assembly drawing. It is basically a burn map of where all the electrodes go. And it also creates an isometric view of each electrode and puts the X, Y, Z values there along with any rotation value. And if that electrode burned in another spot as well, you would see it in the drawing too. It also creates a nice chart with the electrode locations and rotations. We can also output individual drawings for each electrode, which we will show next. This drawing is completely customizable. What I'll be showing here is a two-page drawing. The first page shows an inspection drawing of the electrode, and the second is a burn drawing for the location of the electrode. And even though the whole process is highly automated, I have all the control I need to make the drawings the way my people on the shop floor want to see them. I'm going to show you how I can go inside and give a hidden attribute to both the core block and the electrode. But I'm going to make the electrode's attribute different. It's going to have thick red lines that really draws attention to what has taken place in that location. This concludes our first video that demonstrates how Simatron can save you time and money designing your electrodes. If you liked what you saw here, be sure to watch the next video to see how you can program these same electrodes as efficiently as you design them. To see a more detailed demonstration, even on your own real job, fill out the form below.